Crafty Peeps, this is Angel Holt with Angel Holt Designs. Here I'm going to show you how to uh, make a shabby chic pillow. Um, and I cut out some squares from a, the satin off of a wedding dress. And the first thing you want to do is decide how you want your pillow to look. And I pulled out some different trims and laces that I have um, collected over, you know, finding odds and ends and stuff. And um, what I'm going to do is the bottom half of my pillow is going to be nothing but ruffles, but the top half is going to remain the satin. So um, what you're going to do is, is you're going to find the trims that you're wanting. And my trims are vintage. Um, they're like creams and they're not stark white like um, the satin here. But they still, you know, you can still make a beautiful pillow. And I had all of this satin from um, a wedding dress. And I thought, well, this would be great. Now, we are going to be using a sewing machine. Um, because I like to sew my pillows. Um, you can use fabric tack as stitches. You can use hot glue as stitches. Um, but traditionally you would want to sew it. But I know there's a lot of peeps out there that don't have a sewing machine. And uh, for a while I didn't have one. Um, so I would hot glue it. So I'm just sitting here um, cutting some different layers of trim and seeing what I can use. Now this is one of my favorites. It stretches. I love this one. I found this one on eBay. Let's see if they got more of it. And it has pearls in it and it's very pretty and when you cut it you have to cut in between the pearls but it stretches so it'll do really well with the pillow and um, you can you can use an already made pillow um, and just create a cover for it or you can do like I'm gonna do start from scratch and stuff it with batting or fiber feel or and stuff like that okay so all right now you've got all your pieces now the first thing you're going to uh, set aside one piece and make sure it is hard to try to cut a perfect square um, so I'm just going to clean up the edges here a little bit because I noticed that one side is wider than the other. Okay. There we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to get you some safety uh, stick pins or um, I'm going to use just some corsage pins I have here. I know I can use smaller pins, but... I'm going to use these. Okay, my first layer uh, let's see, let's do this one first. Now you're going to uh, pin this um, on the top on the right side of the pillow and And you're going to pin it on for the time being so that you can run it through your sewing machine. And I'm going up about an inch because you're going to need about a quarter of an inch for seam allowance. So, and when you pin it, make sure that you pin it straight. 
as you can. I always like to pin my stuff because when I take it back and forth to the sewing machine, um, it won't slip on me. So what you're going to do, if you're using a hot glue gun, you would glue this. If you're going to use fabric tack, you do the same thing. And if you're going to use a sewing machine, you're going to do a running stitch. Um, my tension, my length is at a two, and I'm just using a regular standard stitch. And when you put your pins in there, have the, the top of the pin toward you and the sharp end away from you when you put it in your sewing machine. So as you sew, you can just slip it out and uh, put it in your pin cushion or set it aside. Um, that's just like a little trick that I've learned from my grandmother, and I'm, I'm sure it's a standard um, trick. And then, like right through here, this is kind of like a stretchy lace. So you have to keep in mind that some laces are stretchier than others. And if you want, you uh, a good thing you can do, but you got to watch on your satin. Um, you can uh, iron this down um, to help you um, with tougher laces if you're using a tougher lace. Um, but yeah, you can iron this down and um get ready to start so i'm gonna set up my sewing machine and um set all this stuff over here i have it mine's a portable sewing machine and i'm trying to figure out a way yeah maybe you can see it that way okay now I'm going to go ahead and pull this pin out. I don't know if you can. And what you're going to do is just do a simple standard um, stitch. Oh, my eyes are itching. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a few um, centimeters here. I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to do a reverse stitch all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to stitch all the way down. Slow. Make sure. Take your time with it. Right there at the end, you're going to reverse. And there you go. Some people say my soul machine on video sounds like a diesel motor, but um, I can't help that. <laughs> I don't have one of the fancy ones. All right, so there's our first piece on there, as you can see. Uh, no. Let me turn my camera back around. I'm going to have to fix my camera. This little stand I have is not working. Okay. So there we go. So now what we're going to do is... Hmm. I don't want to clip all that off quite yet. I'm just going to clip some of it off here. Just clip that little piece off. And then now all you're going to do is take your other pieces and you're going to layer them on top of each other like this and you're going to continue that process just like so 
and you're going to do that till you're halfway up the pillow and then um, and then we're going to start putting the pillow together this is a really easy pillow to make um, great for starters if you can sew a straight stitch or glue in a straight line you can do this pillow and if you have scraps beautiful scraps you just don't know what to do with you can do that with this pillow so I am going to continue this process don't poke yourself continue this process of sewing on different layers up to about halfway up okay and then I'll be back to show you the end result okay ladies here we go I have all the layers sewed on just like this as you can see now what I've done here on the sides as you see here I have undone uh, one of the loops on this uh, fabric or this trim that has the the faux pearls I've undone one of them because if I ran this over my sewing machine it's liable to break my needle and I don't want to do that so I've trimmed them off um, to be even so I'm going to finish up doing that right here okay you're just going to trim them trim off all of that excess there just like that okay so now that we have it flat and for added security now you can use fray check um, and if you don't have fray check you can put a little bit of glossy accents along the edge but with satin I'm just going to take uh, what Fee calls it a flamethrower but it's actually just like a little um, just a lighter and you're just going to singe those edges like that just cut that off right there and you're going to do that all the way around so that it will prevent um, fraying like right there and I'll do it on this side as well okay so now you're going to get your other piece and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go down both sides and here, do it this way. I'm going to go down both sides and I've already uh, singed the edges of this piece okay so you're going to make sure that all of your um, laces are nice and flat and oh, I got a piece of string there. Okay, so you're gonna make sure all your laces are nice and flat. Okay? Now don't worry about the bottom piece here quite yet. We're not worried about that right at the moment. So I'm just going to put a pin there and we're going to do just a simple running stitch all the way down on this side and again just make sure all of your laces are flat and take your time and cut down the volume if you don't like to hear my sewing machine okay Be really slow about this and make sure okay I'll undo that make sure I'm going to back it up and go forward. 
that just helps secure the corner. So now when we open it, see how it's beautifully gotten all of the laces snag, really nice, like that. Okay, now you're going to want to do along the bottom here. Now, this one here, I do not want caught by the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm going to pin this particular lace back. The bottom one can be caught because with this particular style of pillow, I don't want anything hanging off the bottom. I just want it, you know, caught. And then right here on the edge, just make sure that when you, when you pin it, when you run it down and do the running stitch, Make sure your light sides are together and as even as you can make them. And you're going to go all the way down. Now it's going to take a little practice to take this particular um, section slow. Okay, line it up. Stop and line it up. You know, stop and line this one up. Now, I didn't go all the way to the edge, and you'll see why in just a moment, okay? Now, as you see, that has been caught, but when if I remove the pin here, that will lay over like that. So, then once you're done, you're just going to trim off the excess here. like that okay now on this one here because I didn't go all the way to the edge you're going to catch all of that and remember you undone that little piece there now you wouldn't have to worry about this if you didn't if you don't have a uh, trim that has the pearl in it okay all right all right Now this is the tricky end. Let me make sure of something real quick. I'm going to fold this outward. Yeah, I caught that in. That's the way I wanted it. Okay, so we're going to fold it back. Pillows, for people that are learning to sew, pillows are a good starting point so now I'm just going to make sure all of this is straight as I can get it make sure again all of your laces are laying straight
Okay. There's that one. And there's that one. And there's that one. And we'll fold that one back. In fact, I'm going to pin it. Now I'm folding this one corner back. I want to catch some of it, but not all of it. Okay, so you're going to fold that little lip back because we made the la this lace loose. So you're only going to fold back the bottom corner so that you can catch it right here at the bottom. And then you're going to line up the rest of your laces. Make sure you have them all lined up like that. This is the tedious part in making sure of this. Trust me. <laughs> There we go. All right. Now we can get it going. Just taking that extra time to make sure that your laces are laying flat makes for a really nice pillow okay so I'm gonna do this first section first I always do the harder section first okay you're gonna stick it under there One reason why I don't like working with satin that much because it moves on me. Okay, so I'm going to start up here. All right. Where did my tail go? Okay. Okay, now I'm going to take that pin out right there. So now when I unfold it and unfold this end, all of the laces are caught except that one. And if it's a little frayed, you can snip it. See, all of the laces are caught except the bottom one. And then you got your very bottom one here. Really pretty. Okay, so you're going to fold it back. Fold it back. And then you're going to finish going up the side. Okay. And what you'll do is you'll start at where you stopped and just take your time because again satin moves and it it's it's a booger so don't worry one side and trim away all the excess and do the same up here trim away all that excess and 
and it would not hurt. I'm gonna go ahead and take this pin out. And it would not hurt to go ahead on this side, um, do more fray check and or run the uh, the lighter. just to singe those edges. Make sure you cut off all your excess. Okay, now you're gonna run the stitch up this side, and I'm just gonna start at the bottom again. Just so that I can make sure I've snagged that corner. Okay. Again, just clean up all of the thread, trim away any excess. There we go. Now on the top here, I'm going to trim away. This I have. Now I'm not going to say this is going to come out perfect because I know it's not. Again, I used to sew a lot before I got into um, crafting with mixed media and stuff. And I'm a little rusty on everything, but there we go. So now what you're going to do is you're going to start at the top corner and you're going to go almost to the middle and then you're going to run a, a straight stitch down and then you're going to back your, back it up and go and stop then you're going to go up about an about two inches and then you're going to do the same side uh, the same thing to the other side we've got to create an opening so we can fold uh turn the pillow out you know inside out and then stuff it and then we're going to hand stitch that closed but you definitely want the security, that extra stitching, and you'll see why. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to reverse. Then I'm going to go again. Okay. Now, I'm going to skip about two inches. And now I'm going to go forward. Then I'm going to reverse. And now I'm going to go forward again and go all the way to the end. I'm going to reverse on this one. Okay. Now I'm going to clip off any excess that I have. Okay. And now I'm pretty much done with the sewing machine. 
so I can set it aside. And I'm going to singe the edges up here at the top. Because I don't want any fraying. Now, if you used a cotton-based fabric, you wouldn't have to worry about the fraying as much. But when you're working with satins and stuff like that, you really have to take that extra measure. Okay, so the pillow is now needing to be inverted. And because I made that hole, I can slowly push and turn the pillow right side out. Now, because I've done the back stitch on each edge, I don't have to worry about the stitches popping on me so easy where it'll allow me to do this. Always um, put that extra reverse stitch in there on edges, corners, anything like that. Because one thing is so annoying is you've done all this work and when you turn it the right side out, you've missed one little area, then you have to fold it back in itself and then sew that and then fold it back out. So if you want to prevent that, just add those secured stitches and you know you can do it now you're going to get you like a, a stick a dowel or something or you can use your scissor and your first thing you're going to do is you're going to push out the corners like that okay and if you got any loose threads you're going to snip them away now we're going to push out this corner like that. Again, any loose threads, you're going to snip them away. Now you're going to push out this corner and then you're going to push out that corner. And without it being stuffed, there is our pillow. And then you can stretch it out, you can iron it, pull a little on the edges there, go back in with your scissor, and push those corners like that. And then right here where I had undone that loop, you can take a little bit of fabric tack or a little bit of hot glue and you can tack that back down and that is only if you're working with a lace that has that and then right here where this lace is loose I'm just going to singe the edges a little bit and just snip away any little imperfections there Do the same thing there. Whew. Well, that caught, didn't it? Just slip it away. It caught on fire. And again, um, you can uh, glue that down on the corner there. Some laces are harder than others. You will learn that. And I'm just going to trim up this little edge here because I, it's going to bug me if I don't. So now what I'm going to do is get my um, stuffing or my fiber appeal. And then I'm going to start stuffing the pillow. And then we're going to close it by simply folding the edges down and doing a closing stitch. Okay, and then we're going to add something really pretty to here. Again, it's been a while since I've sewed, and I'm trying to show like simple projects that can be done without having to use a sewing machine. And see, now you can take your iron and you can iron that down, get those edges nice and crisp. 
there you go. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I've stuffed the pillow and I've stitched that shut. And now I'm just going to add some decoration. Um, as you can see, it's a nice little, little throw pillow there. And then I've got this little embroidered piece. Thought would go on there, but first I wanted to add a touch of bling, and I am going to glue this on. So I'm going to do it very carefully and take your time with this. Just lay that that right there. Lay that down like that. Okay. You can hand stitch um, this on, but this is a throw pillow. It's an accent pillow, so it's not really made to to lay on. And you can. Um, these can be turned into, uh, you know, a green bearer pillow or just whatever you want to do it with. Okay, so there's that one. And I'll snip off that piece of metal there. There we go. Ooh, pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to glue on um, this piece here. Try to get it in the middle. Hold your pillow up so that you can see. Like that. And then... I'm just now you can use fabric glue or you can use hot glue, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. We go now I'm gonna add a little tail here like that I'm gonna try to make sure you know okay I'm just going to glue that right there in the center Give it a press. And then I have this beautiful piece of bling for the finishing touch. I hope you've liked this tutorial. Like I said, it has been a while since I've sewed. And I'm sure there are a thousand ways you could do this a lot better or easier or um look up tutorials but pillows are a great way to practice and stuff and I think I'm going to put a bow um, but a great way to you know for starters to practice and stuff so but if you haven't done so already um, like share and subscribe to my channel tell your crafty peeps about it Follow all the links below in the description box so you can stay in touch uh, with everything I post and do. 
um, join my Crafty Peeps group over on Facebook. The link will be below as well. And um, stay for photos. Be sure to do that. I won't snip. Off. I'm going to singe these ends. If you have any questions or anything, just let me know. Um, yeah, that's going to be cute. But yeah, just have fun uh, making pillows and stuff, you know. Well, I'm going to turn this one, this one's a little long. But there you go. Isn't that pretty? Gorgeous. Simple, easy. It's about, you know, if you, it's just have fun. And then see, as you can see on the bottom there where I caught the lace, you see that. Then you have all these wonderful ruffles and just a really cute accent pillow for your room or your your bed or um, in the baby's room. Hmm. So again, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. And. Uh, I'm really searching for a piece of bling. Um, nah, I am, I'm just going to leave it alone. Just leave it like that. And like always, ladies, until what next crafty project, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.